Hi, I'm Marshall Brain, and welcome back to the Time Capsule Video Project. Today we're going to look at grocery stores and groceries in 2010. A typical American probably goes grocery shopping at least once a week, possibly two or three times. Let's start by defining a grocery store in 2010. There are lots of stores all around town that sell some of these items, but a grocery store is a store that has all of these items. And in particular, it has a big produce section with fresh fruits and vegetables. It has a big meat section with both fresh and processed meats like hot dogs in it. it has a big dairy case where you can buy milk and eggs and yogurt and stuff like that it has lots of frozen foods both frozen vegetables and frozen dinners like whole meals that are frozen and ready to go and then it also has stuff like breakfast cereal and snack foods and baked goods, bread, rolls, things like that. And then additionally probably has paper products and all kinds of stuff for personal care, cleaning supplies and things like that. So when you go into a grocery store in America in 2010, you're going to find all that stuff in a store that typically you know, might be as small as 20,000 square feet, but could be much, much larger up to, you know, an acre or two in a big grocery store. If you take that to be the definition of a grocery store, then the closest grocery store to the brain household is one mile away. And there are 10 grocery stores within two miles. So let's take a quick look at all those different grocery stores. The store where the Brain family does most of its shopping is called BJ's. It's a little different. It's called a membership club or a warehouse club, and they sell stuff in bulk. So you can't buy one roll of paper towels at BJ's. You always have to buy them eight rolls at a time. Everything comes in big packages. But since we have six people in our family, that's okay. The most popular grocery store chain in the Triangle is called Food Lion, and there are two of those within two miles of the Brain household. It's a traditional mainline grocery store. Harris Teeter is the second most popular chain in the Triangle, and there are two of those within two miles of the Brain household as well. Lowe's is the third most popular chain in the Triangle, and there's actually one within walking distance of the Brain household, but for some reason we never go there. Both Target and Walmart are giant discount stores. Walmart, for example, is the largest employer in the United States right now. It's huge. And they've both added grocery store sections fairly recently. They became official grocery stores within the last year by adding produce sections. So they don't have the same variety that a mainline grocery store chain would have, but they have everything that makes them grocery stores. They just have fewer brands. Trader Joe's is a specialty grocery store they tend to sell organic and gourmet stuff to foodies and finally there's Whole Foods another specialty grocery store they sell nothing but organic food and Lee tends to buy her yogurt and her meats and her fruits and vegetables there that's a lot of different stores within two miles of our house and it shows you how important groceries are in 2010 now this graph which the News and Observer published about a month ago shows how the grocery store marketplace breaks down in the triangle so what does it look like when you walk into a grocery store in 2010 here we're gonna go visit a Walmart Supercenter in Raleigh. A Walmart Supercenter is different from a normal Walmart. It's actually a full grocery store and it's embedded inside a giant Walmart store that usually sits on maybe four or five acres of, of actual store space. And we'll just walk in here and have a little bit of a look around. The first section you hit when you walk in is the produce section on the left and the bakery section on the right and you know it's both loose fruits and vegetables like you see here and a person would like walk up to this and decide that he or she wants some granny smith apples and you'd put them in a plastic bag and and this scale you'd use that to weigh your apples you know you might think you want three pounds since they're priced by the pound so you get three pounds of apples and you use that scale to figure out how many pounds there are these are grapes red grapes and white grapes probably from chili they also sell packaged fruits and vegetables for example this woman is buying a package of blueberries and they sell lots of other things in packages but let me just take a second to point out 
the way she's holding her groceries, this is called a shopping cart. So in America in 2010, you push one of these carts around and you put all the stuff you want to buy into the cart. And then at the end, you check out. And sometimes if you know you aren't going to buy very much, you use a little basket instead. But these carts you see all throughout any normal grocery store all through the day and here for example is iceberg lettuce sold by the head but then they also sell stuff in bags like carrots in a bag or here these are all bags of lettuce if you don't want to cut up your head of iceberg lettuce yourself you can get it cut up for you and put in a bag these are party trays with shrimp and deli meats on them and stuff and then we enter the giant meat section so yeah, you know, I don't know what you're going to think about this in the future, but in 2010, what happens is they grow cows and pigs and chickens on farms, and then they cut them up and sell them in the meat section at a grocery store. And these are all different cuts of beef in this case. This is a chuck tender steak. You know, you pay three or four dollars a pound for it, and it depends on the cut of meat. So if you get a steak, it might be $10 a pound. If you get hamburger, it might be $2 a pound. It just depends. Uh, these are little filet mignon steaks that have been wrapped in bacon and packaged in a plastic wrapper. Uh, that is a really good price for filet mignon, but who knows how good they are. This is hamburger prepared as patties. Hamburgers sold by the pound. Hamburgers sold in plastic tubes. Uh, you know, it, it all comes in these different forms and people buy whatever they prefer. Then down the center, these are frozen meats. So, you know, for example, this is frozen chicken that comes in a, in a plastic bag and you, you know, these are chicken wings. And so you take these home, thaw them out and cook them either in a frying pan or in the oven or something like that. There's also some strange stuff like beef liver. You know, all 12 people in Raleigh Park Chitlins, all 12 people in Raleigh who eat liver and chitlins can get them here. And uh, these are turkeys, frozen turkeys. That's uh, really common around Christmas or Thanksgiving, not served very often in the summer in the United States. 15 bucks for a turkey. That might be a dollar a pound. So you come into this meat section either you know, with a list or a preconceived notion of what you're going to be cooking for the next three or four or seven days, and you buy all the meats you're going to use during the week, and then you put them in the refrigerator or the freezer. These are hot dogs. You can see hot dogs are a huge big deal in America in 2010 because this hot dog section probably has a hundred different varieties, different brands, different sizes, different seasonings. You know, cheese-filled hot dogs, uh, it, they have all these different kinds. So here I've switched over to a Super Target, and we're walking down the alcohol aisle. So on the right-hand side, we have beer, all different kinds of beer. We have beer by the case, beer by the six-pack, beer in bottles, beer in cans, a hundred different brands of beer. And then on the left, we have wines. And there's even more wines than there are beers because there's a zillion wineries all around the world. And wine comes in all shapes and sizes. Here's a bottle for forty three forty nine. It goes all the way down to eight ninety nine, And at Trader Joe's, you can get it for $2 a bottle. This is the freezer section. On the left, we have ice creams. And these, you'll see ice cream goes all the way down the left-hand side here. Different brands, different sizes. Ice cream by the half gallon, all the way down to ice cream cones at the end. Over here, this is frozen pizza for five seventy nine. The kids happen to love DiGiorno's frozen pizza, but they have all different kinds of brands of frozen pizza. Then they have different varieties of pizza-like stuff, and uh, you can you can see pizza rolls, um, which are just little like egg rolls filled with pizza filling. And you can see that ice cream is still continuing. A drumstick is is ice cream in a cone with some chocolate and nuts on top. And then we come in here to the dairy section. So this section contains all different kinds of yogurts, cottage cheese, milk, eggs. So these are just yogurts right here in little six or eight ounce cups for about 50 cents a cup. A, a zillion different flavors and a diff, about four or five different brands. Then they have 
um, milks, and this is all different shredded cheeses in bags like mozzarella cheese or cheddar cheese shredded up. These are cream cheeses and then the obligatory bagels and all different kinds of eggs. You can get them in different sizes. You can get a dozen, a half dozen. And then over here is gallons of milk. So normally you can buy skim milk, 1% milk, 2% milk, whole milk. Eventually it's time to pay for it all. Here we are at the grocery store. What are we doing? Getting food. Yes. How much do you think this is going to cost? I like $50. Yeah. 20 This is $3.19. This is probably... A dollar fifty. This was two dollars. Probably like ten dollars. This was two fifty. Probably twenty dollars. This is a dollar fifty. This is two fifty. I don't know how much those were. You bought them, and that was two fifty. I didn't buy them. Well, you picked them up. I don't know how much they are. You were the one who said to. We don't have Publix in Raleigh. This was shot at a Publix in another city in February. Each item we bought has a barcode on it, and the checkout clerk is just going to slide that item over a laser scanner. The scanner picks up the barcode, looks in the database, figures out the price, and then shows it on this display. Alright, Irina, you're going to pay for it. No, I'm not. Here, take the credit card. I'm not going to pay for it. Swipe it. Where? In the swiper thingy. Like that? Yeah, but flip it over. <coughs> the magnetic stripe down and toward the machine. Here, yes, slide it. 2010, we were close. Ha! <laughs> Okay, it's a credit card. Transaction processing. Please. You really need a new wallet. Thanks so much. Here's a typical item you might buy at a grocery store, a can of beef ravioli made by Chef Boyardee. This is the barcode that's read to see how much an item costs when you check out, and then this is the ingredient label that comes on every item. So let me just show you what happens after you go to the grocery store. You come home, and generally all that food you bought ends up either in the pantry or in the refrigerator. So this is what we have in our pantry here at the Brain Household. You have everything from breakfast cereal, uh, this is all pasta stuff, uh, either just plain pasta like spaghetti uh, or prepared stuff like rice aroni. Uh, these are ramen noodles, you put them in boiling water and they cook in a minute or two. This is all canned stuff, everything from cans of soup to cans of chicken, to uh, little cans of ravioli or chili or applesauce or spaghetti sauce here. Down here we have big bags of stuff like five pounds of chocolate chips and five pounds of marshmallows or sugar. This is all baking stuff, cakes and cookies and oatmeal and, and down here just random stuff like pancake mix soy sauce, more cans of ravioli. In the refrigerator, you know, you buy your milk and it ends up here. In the refrigerator, we have a lot of yogurt, usually cottage cheese, this is peanut butter, normal butter, jelly, for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. These are really good um, cinnamon rolls, which I'm not uh, down here is vegetables and cheese and stuff like that. Stuff on the door. And then over here, this would be crackers and potato chips and breakfast cereal. And then right now we're actually cooking something. Uh, we're making dark chocolate brownies. So you mix them up 
and then they go in the oven and you bake them. So that's how you buy groceries in 2010 in America. It's been the same for about a century and the barcodes have been with us for probably 30 or 40 years at this point.